Ollie from third position. There's a f***ing hole in the side of my motor. What's up guys, Manny from Motor Million, and it's time that we sit down and have a serious conversation about our M1000 Double R. So, just around 400 miles, our M1000 Double R had a major engine malfunction. And I want to let you guys know this video is not made to bash a party or a person. I just think that it is my duty to tell you guys as transparent and as factual as possible as to what happened to it and also the whole story behind how it all started unraveling. Let's go back all the way to the beginning. We got this bike around May of 2023, I think. The bike was delivered to us. We were actually, I actually wasn't sure if I wanted it. I'll be open and honest. And it was kind of a weird situation that we never actually ordered the bike, but we had the opportunity given to us to purchase the bike. We received it. You guys saw my first ride on it. I believe it had six miles on it where we actually had a check engine light on the bike or a dashboard message saying there's some big trouble, I forgot the exact words, and to stop as soon as possible. So guys, can't make this stuff up. The bike has nine miles and I was supposed to be doing a first ride to get acquainted with the BMW. And as you see, I pulled over somewhere safe right now, but Look at this, serious fault in engine control, onward journey possible, half checked by a Ford shop. This is uh, what you get when you buy these bikes nowadays. And uh, I don't know, I'm speechless. If you could tell, I'm kind of annoyed. We'll see, let's see what this is. Nine miles, nine miles guys. Now we were rest assured that the bike's engine is okay and it's just a PDI that wasn't done, so the PDI was never done on the bike apparently. I said it from that day on, and I think some of you guys also commented on our first ride video saying that the bike's engine kind of doesn't sound right, and it did sound very metallic. I don't know. We never had any other 2023 M1000 RRs around to compare them to. To me, it never sounded right. And uh, we put around 400 more miles. The bike went through the process that as you guys saw, we did the first service. We did the first service over here. Then at around 400 miles or just a little more than 400 miles, we took the bike to the dyno. I actually rode the bike to the dyno. We didn't trailer it there. I think it was the first few times in its lifetime that bike went full throttle because I don't ride exactly like a maniac on the roads. Unfortunately, we started hearing noises and we caught the engine before it actually grenaded. kind of the fast track of the story, but it doesn't really end over here because I think the real story unfolds as to what happens next. Obviously it has to go to a BMW dealer because I'm not about to take apart an engine that may have a major issue with it. It's best that if the bike goes to the dealership. Let's try to be a little nice with this, but unfortunately we don't want to take stuff to our local dealership. So let's face it guys, these bikes are $40,000. Even if it wasn't $40,000, let's say it's $20,000, which I think you can't really get an s 1000 R even for $20,000. It's a lot of money. And I know 
we work hard over here if it was me or a person in here that purchases these motorcycles that it's a it's a lot of time and effort that has gone towards purchasing this motorcycle to a lot of us it's a dream right i would dream of owning the top of the line bmw superbike or a ducati superbike or whatever brand that is that's a reputable superbike that's out and unfortunately I think there is a problem in our industry that these things do not get the respect that they deserve when they're getting handled. And this is the reason why this bike didn't go to our local dealership because we had a warranty issue that we had sent the motorcycle over to our local dealership. I'll make it very nicely. The bike didn't come back as nice as it went there. It came back with a few more scratches and broken parts, let alone it sat at the dealership for a very simple shim install on the clutch for an extended period of time. I think it was almost close to two months. And this is why this bike didn't go to our local dealership. I think it was a couple days after that we had this engine issue pop up that I decided that probably the best place that this bike can go is Sills BMW, which is in Cleveland, Ohio. It's a 19 hour drive from here in Miami and I called up Sills, as some of you guys might know, Zach, the master mechanic, works at Sills. And knowing that the engine might have to be replaced on this motorcycle, even though I was hoping that it's not the case, Zach is probably one of the only people I know at least that will show the respect to these bikes that it deserves. But also, Zach had already replaced another engine for us on Michael Knight's S1000RR, and it came back just as beautiful as it went to Cleveland. So we loaded up the bike onto my truck and I drove 19 hours straight from Miami to Cleveland to drop it off. Well, here we go. I am in my truck and as you see, the M1000 Doubler is right here. Fortunately, it has something like 440 miles. I'm smiling because I don't know if I should be smiling or if I should be I don't know, crying because there's something big time wrong with the head of the bike. There's a lot of noise coming in. I think the shift cam failed, but we don't know yet until we open the engine up. Unlike the SP2, where it had an oil leak that we fixed it, I don't dare to open the engine up myself right now because I'm capable of doing it, we're capable of doing it. But if there is something more catastrophic than just a cam change and a shift cam actuator change that it needs, I'd rather have BMW to deal with it because it can get pretty costly for a replacement engine. So, as you can see, I have my GPS set to sales BMW. 18 hours and two minutes left. You're probably thinking, why didn't I ship the bike? And I'm probably thinking, why didn't I ship the bike? And I've been thinking about it for a day right now. Two days right now, actually. That what should we do? But shipping was going to lose some precious time by the time the motorcycle got up to sales and by the time Zach got to take a look at it so I took the ultimate decision of just loading it up sucking it up driving 18 hours to drop this beauty off at uh, Zach at sales BMW in Cleveland and right now I'm in Miami and uh, hopefully we could get a fix and you're probably wondering why am I taking it to Cleveland are there no BMW dealers in Miami I'll be open and honest, I don't trust a lot of people working on these things and Zach is pretty much one of the only people that I trust touching our own BMWs and uh, that's why it's going there. Let's see, let me get on the way, maybe I'll do some updates along the way for you guys which I don't think there's going to be any updates with the bike so there's not going to be anything worth me updating but next time I make a video hopefully I'll be safe and sound in Cleveland, I'll show you guys Zach maybe Eve, and uh, let's see. Here goes nothing, guys. Number one, because obviously we wanted to find out what happened. I was curious, but also we wanted to see because if it was a top end issue, like a rocker or something with the cams, it probably could have been fixed pretty quickly because apparently the BMW dealers with certain failures, they don't need to open a full blown warranty claim. 29 miles to Cleveland. Almost. Here is the infamous sales motor sales, and I think I'm gonna go in from this side. Let's see. Yeah, that's, 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 that's. 
Here we are. Deep, this is for you. You're gonna see Zach's face. What's up, Zach? Hey, what's going on? <laughs> He was upset How's that it going. You made it. Yeah, yeah How man. How was that drive? 19 hours. 19 hours. It was Eve's uh, M1000, but I'll check back with you guys. I took the bike there. Zach was ready, and he actually had the bench ready for me because he knew that I'm going to be tired with a 19 hour straight drive, but I also I'm curious to see what happened. So he had his bench ready. We rolled the bike on there. We took everything out that we had to. We popped the valve cover off. Surprise, surprise. It looks good in there. And that's where he turned around and told me, Manny, it probably is not gonna be resolved right now. So, you know, leave it with us. Let's open a claim with BMW and let's see what happens. And this is where things get interesting. I came back back to Miami because obviously I have commitments with work and I have to be here. I have a family here. I get a text message from Zach showing that he drained the oil and there's a lot of metallic particles. And at this time, he said that he's going to open a case with BMW just to see what they say. I think BMW had asked him to drop the oil pan just to see what's in the oil pan. And when the oil pan was dropped, there was a lot of shavings in there, a lot more than what it was supposed to be, because it's, this doesn't look like clutch shavings or other shavings that might come from the engine. And right away, BMW said, we're not covering this under warranty. Imagine. They just saw shavings in the engine. They don't know what caused it. They didn't even care to investigate what caused it. All they said, we're not gonna cover it under warranty. Okay. So this is when Pam, which is sales BMW's owner got involved and she said that I should probably reach out to BMW customer service because as a cu customer, which we are, and I'm representing Motor Million in this case, I should reach out to them and let them know that, you know, you probably want this looked further or you want to see why it's not covered under warranty. I call BMW customer service. And let me tell you this, BMW customer service is not BMW. I could make all that out because number one, they lied to us saying that your dealership is not wanting to do the warranty work. It's not BMW. If the dealership says it, we will do it. And I knew this is not the case. And I know this is not how warranty works. It's manufacturer's warranty. The manufacturer says it. And BMW actually has a backend system with the dealers that they message each other. It's, it's some sort of an interface that they have. And it was, it was through that interface that BMW's person or the personnel, whoever it is, had said that they're, they're not going to cover this under warranty. And on the phone, the lady, I think I spent about 40 minutes or an hour of my time trying to talk to them. And I was trying to be as professional as possible, which I think everyone should be, but some people might lose their cool, but I was trying to keep my cool. And finally, she decided to open a case. And mind you, while I'm talking to this lady, I hear stuff about fridges and stuff in the background. So I don't think BMW make fridges. And also the lack of knowledge of the person behind the phone that was supposed to be BMW customer service. I could tell that I don't think they are hired by BMW. Maybe it's a third party call center that handles other products than just BMW's products. In this time frame, the dealership also tried to open another case just to see if they get any further with BMW. At this point, I knew that the dealership also knew that number one, they want to find out what happened, right? Because you can't tell what happened by just shavings in the oil pan. And number two, if it was anything, they don't want injustice done to the customers because a dealership works in the best interest of the customers, right? Obviously, they're not going to come do things for you that they're not supposed to because there's a fine line between that, but they don't want to do injustice, let's say. Somehow this got escalated to BMW claims and I finally got someone on the phone that actually works for BMW and it was the first thing I had asked them when I spoke to them. Do you work for BMW, Motorrad, North America? And they said, yes. I'm like, great. You're not hired by some third party company. So they kind of understood what was happening. I tried to explain to the person who was on the phone what was going on. Again, um, I think it's no fault of their own, but some people are not very familiar with engines and the technicalities. They're just there as customer service to kind of maybe help you out as a customer. And we escalated the case. Finally, BMW 
warranty department said, okay, let's take the engine apart. Don't forget, they, they had already said we're not covering this under warranty without even knowing what happened. So Zach took the engine out. They took the, I think when they took the engine out, the oil pan was out and they were looking at the rod caps and the cylinder two rod cap was loose. Loose in terms of, I had play in it. At this point we knew, okay, there's a problem with cylinder two and that's probably where all the shavings came from. And uh, you could probably imagine, I was just curious, right? At this point, I really don't know what's gonna happen. I, I am hoping that there's gonna be an engine replacement coming soon. Either way, there was gonna be an engine replacement coming soon. Be it BMW covers the cost or we cover the cost. And uh, Obviously, Zach sent me the videos of the, the cap play and also everything along with it. And they have to record all the processes that they do. So they take pictures when they receive the bike, they take pictures and videos when they're taking stuff apart, just for evidence. And when that rod cap came off, the bearing wasn't spun. So what does this mean? It probably means that usually spun bearings do not happen because of over revs but it might be a chance of an over rev that a spun bearing incident could happen the bearings weren't spun but the bearing didn't look in good shape so also there there wasn't a lot of heat scoring on the bearings which means that it probably is not an oiling issue it's just that the bearing had just started coming apart and to my knowledge of engines, and I've been around engines, and I've seen destroyed engines, and I've built engines over time, not motorcycle engines per se, but engines for race cars and cars. So from my experience, I knew at this point that the probability of us doing anything, anything, that would have caused this failure was slim to none. But obviously I didn't go on a rant and, and, and get angry at anyone at that point. I started reaching out to people that I respect that are in the industry, that people that have spent a lifetime building engines, engineers that are around these things, around motorcycle engines. And I wanted their opinion because obviously I'm not an expert just because I've been around and I've been doing things. I'm humble enough to know that I'm not a know-it-all. So let's try to get some help from people that I may know just to shed light on what really happened. Two people that I remember, again, one is an engineer, another one is a well-respected person in the motorcycle world that builds some very, very high-end engines and big horsepower motorcycle engines. They both said, this is, this is probably not what you did. And BMW also had made a comment that the bike had an over rev, which was very unlikely because like I said, this bike had only gone full throttle maybe a handful of times, maybe three or four times in its lifetime. But sure, they were claiming that there's a 250 RPM over rev, which is, it's 250 RPM. That's barely even an over rev. So at this point, I started asking BMW, what's going on? Why are you guys not warranting this engine? Their response was, you removed the 600 mile rev limiter, not the top end the rev limiter, guys. The the nine or 10,000 RPM, the break-in rev limiter, break-in rev limiter, because I'm gonna do quote unquote, because I don't believe in that break-in rev limiter. I don't think it's for break-in. I think it's probably for legal reasons or also for liability reasons that it's in place. I don't see any other manufacturer having a hard rev limiter on their bikes and everything is fine if you rev them. But that was their response, that because you removed the rev limiter at 400 something or 300 something miles, we're not going to cover this under warranty. Okay, so let's backtrack. When I did the first service on this motorcycle and I did the first service with BMW oil bought from my local dealership, with oil filter bought from my local de dealership, because I don't want to take the bike to the local dealership. There is no other option. I'm not gonna drive 19 hours to Sills BMW because I know that they're gonna respect this machine and respect a lot of people's hard work that works at Motor Million that makes it possible for us to purchase these bikes, to make content for you guys, to get mistreated. And we have the tools available to remove the rev limit. And it was done after what the booklet states. So the user manual or the owner's manual of an M1000RR says first service, 350 miles to 700 miles. 
The procedures are in there. It says remove the engine braking rev limit after you do the first service. And I had asked Zach at sales before I did that because it would take us a long time to do 600 miles. As you guys know, unfortunately, we're busy making content and we don't get to ride these bikes often. So it was gonna take quite a bit of a time for us to reach that 600 miles. We weren't looking to cut corners, but we were just trying to see if it could just remove that braking rev limiter because we want to do the first service. So this was BMW's reasoning why they did not cover that engine under warranty. So let's go back to the engineers. I would mention this to one of the engineers that actually works on some of the stuff that BMW has. Again, I can't put out any names because I don't want to put people in this situation if they don't want to be. Maybe one day if I fly over to Europe, I may get their comments and we may actually put them out for you guys to see and hear. But he said that, I hope they do good for you because you didn't do this. And I hope they do good for you because to his knowledge, this was probably either a bad bearing that was in place or bad assembly of the engine. Also, the other person that I mentioned who builds engines and is very reputable and has spent a lifetime is a much older gentleman than I am. He probably has kids at my age or older. He also said the same thing. He looked at the bearings, the pictures of the bearings, and he said, there's no heat scoring. They're disintegrated. It looks really weird. He's like, to my best guess, it was the same thing. Bad bearings or bad assembly of the engine or some tolerances weren't correct. I tried to bring this up with BMW and let's not forget at this point, we're not really threatening BMW. It's not me and as I'm representing Motor Million and speaking to them because the motorcycle is owned by Motor Million. We're not making threats because there is no need to make threats that, hey, we'll make videos because it's not what we do and it's not what this video is. This video is to give you guys the transparent knowledge or the factual basis of what happened to this motorcycle and how it all went. But we let them know that, listen, we actually make content and we purchased this bike for content. We do not make any negative content and um, I don't know if this means anything to you guys, but we also mentioned that Cali Moto TV, uh, our good friend, he actually had a similar engine failure on a racetrack on an M1000 single R. His bike was at 500 miles. His engine braking limiter was obviously removed before that 600 mile magic number that they claim. And his bike actually had worse off case because his engine blew to the point that there was a crack in the engine casing, that there was oil all over the place, and I think he may have actually uh, suffered a crash from it, or maybe not, but his video is even public. Um, there's a f***ing hole in the side of my motor. I can be on myself right now. But what I will say is that I hope I don't get any flack for the modifications that I've done to the bike. I, that's, that's the only thing that I'm more worried about than anything is them go, oh, well, the Brentune did it, um, which is no, there's no possible way. Um, the header didn't do it. There's, there's no way a motor will let loose like this from just a tune. I mean, this is clear internal, internal destruction so what happened BMW changes the engine like this because they don't want bad reputation or they don't want anything to go out I don't know what's changed since then till now when we said this to BMW they said that they look at stuff case by case basis obviously that's the political correct way to say it but they said that no we're not covering this engine we got the regional sales manager involved to see if they could do any kind of goodwill to see if they want to cover the engine. And to my knowledge, I didn't want partial coverage because that means that we're taking blame for this. So if they're not going to cover it fully, I wasn't interested. Again, they actually didn't even cover it partially or offer to cover it partially. They said that they've exhausted all avenues and they're not voiding the warranty of the motorcycle. They're just not changing the engine under warranty. That's uh, That was it. At this point, I reached out to BMW corporate to the person that I had the contact with now and asked them, can I please get a letter from you guys stating that you guys are not covering this under warranty? That letter has still not been sent to us. This happened in October. This is being filmed now in March, October 2023 to March 2024. 
I've made requests. They said that they don't have such a document to send us. So there's no, nothing in writing that they're not covering this. They asked their dealership to make some sort of an invoice saying engine not covered under warranty, which again, it's not a dealer warranty. It's a manufacturer's warranty. So they still refuse to put it to us in writing. But fast track to now, uh, as of today, the bike has a brand new engine and thanks to Pam and Zach. So Pam at Sales BMW gave us a very small discount, but even the gesture is great because she didn't have to and discounted Zach's labor hours for us to put that engine in. So the bike got a brand new engine from BMW inside and the bike still has full warranty because I asked this, when we get a new engine, is it going to have warranty? Does the bike still have warranty? They said, yeah, the, there's no voiding of warranties. Your bike has full warranty and has full engine. It's just, we forked up right around $15,000 to replace the engine on this motorcycle, which again, I think if it was our fault or if there was any evidence of our wrongdoing in there, we'd be very happy and we'd pay it. And we probably wouldn't be sitting here talking about this right now. Maybe we would have told you guys, hey, we messed up, we paid 15 grand, we got a new engine, let's go. But uh, unfortunately, this is how it is. And it's, this is a very unfortunate case because imagine, and I can imagine as myself, imagine as an enthusiast, I bought this motorcycle for myself and this is what happened to me. I'd be heartbroken, I'd be angry. Um, I'd probably lose faith in, in the brand name that has made this motorcycle, which I think to this point, I have lost faith in them. And uh, it's not because of, what happened with our motorcycle, but it's what's happening with these motorcycles, guys. There's a video that's posted by CarWow. That's an M1000RR stock being raced against the BMW M4. Guess what happened? Oh dear. Sounds like, that sounds like a big end. You've killed it. I was going to say, is that the big end? It sounds something, it could be an exhaust manifold blow. Did you notice a lack of power? Yeah, it didn't go like I thought it would. Oh, bugger. Not only have you beaten me, you've killed my bike. Start it up again. I think that's broken. And your machine is not tuned or anything in any way. That's, a, that's a stock one. The engine, let go. So the engine has a malfunction. And if you listen to that video, it sounds exactly the same sound our engine was making. Cali Moto TV blew up his engine on track. The extent of damage was far too much to even see what exactly happened. I think they have a disassembly video. I may go and watch it because it's been a while since this happened. So his engine let go. Also, if you watch the first race of World Superbike Series for 2024, what happened to the engine on the M1000RR? Oh, but it's top big rack. blow up for top rack. Raz Gatlioglu from third position. He moves straight off to the side of the circuit and then off through the gravel trap altogether. It let go. So again, you know, maybe the World Superbike is far-fetched because there's stuff down to that engine. It's based on the factory M1000RR engine. It's a homologation bike, but maybe that's far-fetched. But I think there are probably some engines that are not built well that BMW is not standing behind. And let's go back a little bit. I don't think they have a good track record, right? Because ever since the S1000RR platform was released, which this M1000RR is based on, it's been plagued with problems, uh, faulty calipers, uh, oiling issues that people were having. It had some oil cooler problems that they could probably go on NHTSA's website to see how many recalls were on it. And unfortunately, I think they do a really good job that they hide these things and they probably have preferential treatment to some people that would let you guys know if there is big issues or you guys should know about purchasing such vehicles because there's a lot of reliability issues. To me, it seems like it, right? That these bikes have. And uh, to them, it just seems like nothing. Because imagine if I was riding that motorcycle on the highway and you know, some people ride them harder than I do. And I believe so. If I actually got on the throttle a couple more times while I was getting on the dyno, that would have probably happened on the road. I wouldn't have been able to hear it. It probably would have blown the engine, would have had a rod or pieces of the engine go through the block, spill oil on the ground, and 
you know, oil and motorcycles don't mix, spilling oil to that degree. And I may have been even seriously hurt or caused an accident or injured somebody else on the road, another motorist, you know? So I think these things to me matter a lot and I'm very, very disappointed. I wanna say, unfortunately, I've had a bad experience with that motorcycle since day one, as you guys know, we showed it to you guys and we try to be as transparent and as open as possible because we do these things out of the love and passion for motorcycles. We don't sugarcoat things. We try to show them to you how it's happened. We don't get any professional treatment from anybody. So we could try to be as unbiased as possible to you guys, but it's just upsetting at the end of the day that this is the way that we get treated. And uh, I think we made a decision that that bike's not coming back over here because there's too much negativity around our M1000RR, at least for us, because when we see it, we're gonna remember all these issues we had. And the bike is potentially sold. There is a potential buyer that has agreed to buy the motorcycle because we all know that these bikes are still hard to get. And if you're able to get your hands on a BMW M1000RR now at 2024, which they jacked up the price, they don't come with carbon wheels anymore, apparently. They have the forged wheels. Actually, a personal friend of mine ordered one. He refused to take delivery because it didn't have the carbon wheels that he specced out that he wanted. Finally, they fessed up and gave him the carbon wheels because he was being very, very stubborn, which I think he should be because if you ordered it with carbon wheels, you should get it with carbon wheels. But a lot of new bikes that are sitting at the showroom floors are just with forge wheels. Nothing against forge wheels, but I think some consumers are being duped by not getting the carbon wheels that they deserve. And they did give my friend a run around too because he did go through the loops and the hoops of uh, reaching out to BMW. He had a negative experience with the customer service too. But finally, they did uh, fess up and give him the carbon wheels. And let, let me tell you this, he actually had a previous generation and 1000 r that had the engine replaced. And we all know those had some major issues with burning engine oil because the design of the engine or whatever it was that this new 2023, 2024 M1000RR got a an extra ring on the piston so that it doesn't just blow by and burn oil. But um, I think I don't want to rant on guys. This is what happened to our M1000RR. We still own the broken engine, luckily. We are going to send the bearings to a bearing and analysis company, a professional company to analyze the bearings to give us a full blown report of number one, what could have caused the problem, what the problem is, the state of the bearings and Maybe we'll still reach out to BMW again and show them the report and say, hey, you guys didn't take the extra mile to do this, but we did it. Do you guys still want to make it right for us? And somehow credit us for the engine. But uh, unfortunately, I think we've broken up with BMWs. It'll be very hard for us to, at least for us to purchase our own BMW again after this experience. I didn't want to let any of you guys down. I was starting to enjoy the build because let's face it, there's a lot of cool parts. But uh, I, I also want to hear what you guys think from everything that I told you guys. Have you had bad experiences with your motorcycle, with your BMW? Put them in the comments below. Are we being drama queens? Because after everything I said, don't come and tell us that, oh yeah, you shouldn't have removed the rev limiter because we all know it's not that. And if you put the comment, good for you. It uh, works in our favor that you commented, but I really, really want a true response from some of you guys just to put yourself in our shoes or put yourself in the shoes of a person who owns this motorcycle that this happened to and this is how you were treated after you gave up 40 something thousand dollars to have this beautiful machine that is the halo of a brand name. But uh, yeah guys, I think uh, this is the true story behind our M1000RR. As I mentioned, unfortunately, I don't think it's coming back over here. On the flip side, I'm smiling now because I'm thinking of other things and this is exactly why we don't want that motorcycle over here because the motorcycles brings us enjoyment. This brings me a lot of enjoyment because this is a true passion of mine. I think we made up our mind about getting another motorcycle to replace that project because we like to keep busy here and wrench on things and show you guys what's possible and it's very exciting. I'm not going to spill the beans because it hasn't happened yet. We have to uh, figure a few logistical issues out and also maybe see what we can do and what we can't do in terms of budgets. Yeah, so that's it.
If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Until next time, guys, have a good one.